Delta 2-7, Delta 2-7, we are ready. 10. In this video, we are going to talk about the aspect ratio, its advantages, disadvantages, and some of its practical implementation. So let's start small with the definition. So the aspect ratio is the ratio of the wingspan to the chord line. Aspect ratio is a very important design parameter as it significantly affects the induced drag and the lift slope of the wing. Drag is an aircraft designer's worst enemy and it is related by an inverse of aspect ratio. So if the wing has a larger aspect ratio, then the induced drag is reduced significantly. Also observe in the graph that when you increase your angle of attack at the same rate, then the wing with a higher aspect ratio has a faster lift slope and the wing with a lower aspect ratio has a slower lift slope. As it is giving more lift at lower angle of attack, higher aspect ratio wing find greater application in gliders where you want the maximum lift at the lowest propulsion. If the aspect ratio has such a positive impact on the aircraft as previously discussed, then why most of the aircraft designer prefer lower aspect ratio? Here's why. It is far more less maneuverable than the airplane with lower aspect ratio. That is the reason why most of the stunt planes have lower aspect ratio. Because the design goal there is to be more maneuverable. The second reason has to do with the structure of the airplane. The longer the wing is, the stronger it needs to be. The stronger it is, the more material needs to be added, which eventually would increase your weight, which is the force opposite to the lift. To maintain lift, you would have to increase your angle of attack, which significantly increases your lift. Now remember that the coefficient of lift is directly proportional to the induced drag. So now you again have more induced drag. So higher aspect ratio wing design are thin, which means that they doesn't have room for retractable landing gear. Also, majority of the fuel in a modern airliner is stored in the wing. So if the wing are thinner, then you would not have room for storing the fuel near the engine which has some other complications for the aircraft designer. In 1954, the United States had an urgent need for a reconnaissance aircraft that could overfly the Soviet Union. The time was the early stage of a Cold War and it was thought by Lockheed that an airplane that could fly at 70,000 feet would be beyond the reach of the Soviet fighters, missiles and radar. So the challenge faced by the aircraft designer was this. Lift must equal the weight on, on an aircraft in a straight and level flight, right? Also, we know that the density decreases as we go up in altitude. To overcome this decrease in density at higher altitude, the coefficient of lift must be increased. However, when you increase the coefficient of lift, the square on top of that lift increases the induced drag a lot. Notice that pi is a constant and the span efficiency or E does not affect the induced drag a lot. So the only way left for the aircraft designer to reduce the induced drag and be able to fly at a higher altitude was to increase the aspect ratio. And when they did that, the result was the Lockheed U2. With a staggering aspect ratio of 14.3, this airplane could fly up to 70,000 feet and the design requirement was met. However, for a commercial airliner, this aspect ratio mean that at lower altitude, uh, a small variation in the angle of attack uh, that could happen from a slight gust of wind would have a greater impact on the lift slope and thus making this choice very unstable for a modern commercial airliner which uses a moderate aspect ratio. So if you've come this far in the video, that means that you've learned something today. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.